Last time on Building Resilience, we were surveying the many aspects of heating and cooling systems. So, heating and cooling systems. This house has a boiler, which means that we've got radiators throughout the house that are providing really great heat. We've got in-floor, we've got standard cast iron, all over. But cooling is something that these old houses didn't come with. Now, upstairs in the attic, where we you know, foamed the whole lid and made this thing super, super, super tight, we were able to put an air handler and what we might think of as a traditional uh, forced air cooling system that's providing cooling to the second floor. Um, very short duct runs, easy to do, easy to balance. And because our BTU load overall went down, we're able to put a fairly small air handler from Mitsubishi up there. This week, we're going back outside in the sun to apply some groovy new WRB that doesn't require cap staples or seam tape. It's important to get the WRB level, so the crew uses a laser to create a reference line. This laser level's from the movie Toy Story. Turns out though, sunlight is the enemy of laser levels, so they revert back to the old school method of snapping a line, which always makes for a good slow-mo video. Unless it doesn't. To make up for that, here's some slow-mo of cleaning up the window openings before the WRB, because that happens too. Before installing Hydrogap SA, you need to carry the roll over to the wall, and Steven's on top of that. So we are using a very cool product from Benjamin Obdike called Hydrogap SA, and the SA stands for self-adhered, which is pretty self-explanatory, right? It adheres itself to the substrate. There's a release liner, you pull it off in the back, and it's sticky, and you put it on the OSB or your plywood or whatever you're using, and you apply some pressure, and that's then going to adhere your WRB to your substrate. No staples, no cap nails, we're done. There's a bunch of additional benefits that come with it as well. Um, the first are the kind of, the, the, the trademark of hydro gap in general, which are these little nubs. And these little nubs provide a little bit of space between their cladding and the WRB and it relieves that hydrostatic pressure that could otherwise hold water that gets behind your cladding or your trims against the building paper and ultimately force it through the building paper, which we want to avoid. So that little break is a big deal and it, it also happens to provide very good drainage at the same time. But there's a secondary benefit and we really came to understand it after we started un installing this. Typically, when we have a paper or a, a, a non-woven fabric WRB and we get to the edge right here where the sheeting meets framing, we typically want to cut that and tape it so that we seal it, so we get that air seal between our building paper and our framing. With the HydroGap SA, it is the tape. So we literally just get to the edge, cut it, bring it around, apply some pressure, and now we are fully air sealed at the framing. So my sheeting, my framing, they're all encapsulated and I have no way for air now to get behind my building paper, uh, cross my sheeting to my window flanges. At window and door openings, it's important to create a seal from the outer WRB across all of the layers to the framing. In this case, there's a seam between the WRB and the OSB, and between the OSB and the stud. This is usually sealed with flashing tape, but because HydroGap SA is self-adhered, you can wrap the WRB into the opening and seal all the layers. Of course, the top and bottom of the rough opening still need to be detailed, but the two sides are done as soon as you install the HydroGap. Once Saul finishes cleaning that rough opening, they start peeling the backing layer off the hydro gap and sticking it to the wall. Stephen puts it on the line and sticks it. And then he uses his handy Benjamin Obdike squeegee to apply pressure to the adhesive to wet it into the substrate. The acrylic adhesive is easy to reposition before it completely wets into the substrate, so it's easy to get the wrinkles out if the camera's rolling. With the top of the sheet where it wants to be, they turn to the corner. 
They roll out enough to get to the opposite end, again removing that top release sheet, then they cut the sheet back about 8 inches past that second corner, tooling the WRB into the wall sheathing all the way. Because Hydrogap is self-adhering, it acts as a flashing tape, so they go back to the 1990s method of WRB window detailing, cutting 45 degree slits at the bottom corners and folding it over the sill framing. If the WRB doesn't stick to the framing, this is a bad detail because it creates another layer for air to leak through. The second row is a lot like the first row, only higher on the house. They stick the top to the line, peel the backing, stick the hydro gap to the house, peel off the bottom release sheet, and cut out the window opening. The top of the window opening is not wrapped into the framing because it needs to overlap the top flange of the window. To keep it sticky until the window is installed, they stick a piece of release sheet to the upper flap. And then they move on to the whole rest of the wall, peeling, sticking, and removing the wrinkles as they go. Even though the upper section of the house will get Invisirap UV to go behind the open cladding, they cover the sheathing with the sticky wrap for a tight air barrier. Saul works it into the corners and around the obstacles, like this rafter tail and the kickout flashing above it, which too many people do not believe exists. And that's a pretty good setup for next time when we'll flash the window openings. stick the windows in the holes, and seal up some tiny holes too. On Building Resilience.